pray and get into the Word today. I'm excited about today's message. I think it's important for you, for you individually. Amen. Let's pray together. Say it with me. Say, Heavenly Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, I open my heart and I open my ears and I expect you to speak to me and minister to me right where I am. My ears are open and my heart is ready to receive from you right now in Jesus' name. Now, Father, we thank you for your word. We ask you to speak to us through your word. And we thank you, Lord, that that which we share today about this being my year, your year of abundant overflow for everyone in this church, we just thank you, Lord, for, that you, through these scriptures, Lord, just speak to us that what belongs to us is ours right now. Not in some future sweet by and by, but right now. And Father, we just give you praise and we give you thanks for all these things. In Jesus' name, and everybody shout it, amen. amen. Turn to your neighbor, give him a high five, and you can be seated. <laughs> Gives me a chance to get a drink of water. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we've been sharing in this series, My Year of Abundant Overflow. And uh, today is part four. <coughs> And I just want to share some things with you uh, in regards to just wrapping up in a nice package here what abundant overflow means for you. Amen. And, uh, you know, God, God always has good things in store for you as his, as his kids and family. How many of you believe that today? Amen. He always, always has good things in store. Everybody say good thing. Good thing. Amen. Good thing. Amen how we say it in the deep south good thing God's got good things for you are you hearing me he does he's got good things for you he has abundant overflow in store for you all this year for you for your family even if you work a job even if you work a job somewhere and you're under someone else's management people will be blessed just because you're there if you just walk and talk that way everything you set your hands to will what prosper amen see that's what the word says and it's the word that we speak it's the word that i have my faith wrapped in amen amen see our god is a good god everybody say good god, good god. do you believe that amen. you know some people don't believe it they think god's up in heaven with a gray beard and a two by four big oak two by four with a huge gutter nail sticking out of one end of it and if you do something wrong he's going to whap the fire out of you a lot of people still believe those things. If I mess up, God's going to get me. No, uh God's a good God. I said God's a good God. He has nothing but good things in store for you. Amen. The only way you get in trouble is when you step away from Him and you're out on your own. You can't live that way. You've got to stay focused on Him. That's why I decided uh, last part of last year I shut everything off. Amen. Going to focus on the Word. Going to focus on the Lord. Hallelujah. We'll focus on things that excite me and uplift me. That's what matters, amen. amen, keeping myself strong. Hallelujah. See, our God's a good God. Do you know the psalmist uh, spoke to us? Uh, uh, and I guess I did, went past that scripture. Oh, well, I don't know where it went. Let's see. Here we go. I got him out of order. Amen. Psalm 119 and 68. The Bible says here about God, it says, You are good and do only what? Do you see that in that good verse? God is good and does only what? Good. You ought to write that down today. It's in your handout, but you ought to write it down somewhere. Look it up in your Bible. Look it up in a bunch of different translations and just make it your confession. My God is good, and He only, only does good things for me. Amen. And it'll minister to you. I go backwards by hitting the backwards arrow. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Amen. You know, He only does good things for you. Hallelujah. Why do you settle for anything less than the good life that God desires for you to have? Why do you settle for anything less than the good life? Because, because of the blood, you're living in the good life. Do you understand that? Good life's not when you retire and you go live down at the, at the whatever in Florida. All right? No, no, no. You got the good life right now. You got the good life right now because you serve a good God. Amen. You need to believe those things and speak those things out of your mouth. Refuse for, to settle for anything less than the good life that God desires for you. You've got to keep your faith strong. Amen. You've got to keep your eyes focused on the Word. 
You got to keep your eyes focused on the prize. You got to keep your eyes focused on the things of God. You know, 2021 is not the time for you to draw back. It's not the time for you to be lethargic and then just moo. <laughs> no, it's the time for you to draw closer to God. Amen. Which is, we're, I'm giving you the central theme we gave you in the first message. My 2021. My 2021 will be a time of excitement, a time of great hope, and a time of unparalleled blessings. Amen. Amen. I want you to say it out loud with me. Hold a hand up to heaven. Say it with me. Say, my 2021 will be a time of excitement, a time of great hope, and a time of unparalleled blessings. Amen. Woo! That's a good confession, isn't it? Amen. Why? Because my God's a good God and He only does good. Amen. Amen. If you're walking around, you start saying things, well, I just don't know if this is going to work out for me and them. You're talking like Job. The thing he most greatly feared came on him. That's right. You want to live that way? That's on you, not on God. God has provided you everything that you need to live a good life. Amen. A good life. Say it again, the theme. My 2021 will be a time of excitement. A time of great hope and a time of unparalleled blessings. Woo! I like that. That's worth running around the church with. Amen. Hallelujah. Go roll on the floor. Amen. Hallelujah. Our God's a good God. Amen. You know, if you're believing for something that you may think's impossible, even if it looks impossible, I mean, if your faith is expecting something to come through that brings relief into your life, um, maybe you're, you're believing for a breakthrough in certain areas. I know some of you are. You've talked to me about it. Or, or for a need to be met that seems to be taking a little bit longer. How many of you have been in the, in the waiting room uh, for something you've prayed about? Amen. Maybe something's just taking a little bit longer. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's a little bit longer. And you're trying to keep it together. Uh, but, you know, it's just a little bit longer. No, it's a great time of hope, a great time of excitement, a great time for unparalleled blessings. Amen. You know, maybe you're really believing for something that's just taking a little bit of time. You've got to keep your joy on. Amen. Keep your faith and your hope set high. Hallelujah. Well, you know what? I think as a pastor here, and you're a pastor, I think I can assume uh, that your answer would be a yes if you're believing for anything like that, that you want to see those things happen in your life. That's a big affirmative, right? Amen. Control, that's a big affirmative. Thank you. I mean, you're really believing God, you know, and you're just believing that it's right. Amen. Well, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't know what your specific need is right now, but I can tell you with confidence that need will be met. Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. I do. Uh, and, you know, uh, I may not know uh, everyone's specific need, but I can promise you right now in, in absolute total confidence that need will be met if you keep your focus. Amen. Keep your confession. Keep your focus. Keep your confession. Keep your focus. Keep your confession. Keep your focus. It's a real key. Everybody misses those things. They want the woo. They want to feel the woo. Listen, when rubber hits the roads, when your confession and your faith will be the thing that keeps you stable. Amen. Amen. It'll be the one thing that'll keep you stable. When the storms of life come, your confession and your faith in the word will be the one thing that'll keep you stable. Are you hearing me? If you've gotten unstable lately, your focus has not been on God. Oh, that real, went over really big. But that's the truth. See, I'm not worried about a thing. You know why? Because my God is what? Good. And He only does what? And He does it all the time. Do you believe that with me? Amen. Oh, but it does No, it doesn't matter what it looks like. What matters is what I believe. And I'm asking you this morning, what will your 21, oh, 20 and 21 be? It's going to be a time of great excitement. It's going to be a time of great hope. It's going to be a time of unparalleled blessings. Amen. Your need's going to be met. Are you listening to me? Amen. I said your need's going to be met. Amen. You need to start thanking God about it. Amen. You know, let me say this. Your faith needs to drive you. Are you hearing me? Your faith needs to drive you. Amen. Your faith needs to drive you in all that you do. It's your faith that must drive you. Not fear, but faith. 
When fear drives you, we tend to make decisions not based on the Word of God, don't we? When fear is driving you, your mind goes la-la and makes decisions that aren't based on the Word. But you've got to remember this. This is the greatest revelation you ever hear right here. You ready? Faith has two parts, two systems that you need to make sure is functioning in your life all the time. Everybody shout all the time. All, the time. all right. You ready? Write them down. They're not in your handout. There's two systems, two, uh, two, two parts of faith that you've got to keep operating all the time in your life. You ready? Uh, faith, the two parts, the two systems. Number one, the believing system. Amen. The believing system. In other words, I believe what? His Word. That believing system needs to be in 100% tip-top shape. Everything oiled, everything greased, functioning like a well-oiled machine. Amen. You got to. Your believing system needs to have a fresh coat of paint. Your believing system needs to have a, have, have, a, have a fresh wax job on it. Amen. To keep it moving forward. I'm talking about you believing the Word. You're in the Word. You're finding scriptures that you're going to stick into your, into your heart and speak those things out of your mouth because your faith is going to drive you. Second system you need to have make it, making sure that it's operating in your life. The first one, the believing system. I believe His Word. Number two, number two, this is so simple, but I know, you know, a lot of people just don't do it. The trouble comes, they just go off, go off track. Here we go. The believing system, I believe the Word. Number two, the speaking system. Every one of you have a sound system built into your body. It's called your mouth. And if you go speak in doubt and unbelief, guess what you get to receive? Guess what? You'll be unstable. <laughs> Amen. As lost as a one-eyed road lizard in a Texas hailstorm. You'll be lost and undone. Amen. The speaking system. What am I speaking? Help me out. If I'm believing His Word, what should I be speaking? His Word. His Word. His Word. His word. So two parts of faith. The believing system. I believe His Word. The speaking system. I speak His Word. If you get those two parts working right in your life, you'll see, the mighty, you'll see mighty things happen. You'll see healings take place. You'll see miracles. You'll see an increased flow of, of abundance in your life because you'll be operating in kingdom principles and you'll see those things moving. Amen. You know, I just want to stir you up today about this. God told me that He, he is opening a new door for you and for this church to be blessed and experience supernatural increases never before. Do you believe that with me? Amen. Maybe you're thinking, well, how could that happen? How could that be? It can happen because God's not limited. God is good and He only does what? Good. Amen. You know, God's not limited by, by anything the government does. God's not limited by anything that your work may do or anything else. Uh, you know, we were at a uh, CarMax the other day, uh, Friday night, and uh, the guy that we've known for a while he was talking to me. I asked him how it was during, during the slowdown and stuff. He goes, well, I got furloughed for a while, but I had the best vacation for seven weeks I ever had in my life. He goes, my insurance was paid. I said, well, that's an answer to prayer. He goes, you got that right. My, they paid all my insurance. And he named all the things they did. And I was like, that's awesome. I'm glad they were able to do that. He said they probably did uh, certain things, you know, where they had the money to make sure people were taken care of. Uh, um, and he goes, during, during the worst part of the slowdown, he said he only sold three cars. Three cars. Now, you know if you sell cars, if anybody knows, they got to, I mean, every week has to be a certain amount. How many is it, Mark? Because you did that at one time. At least. Twelve a month to meet the bonus. To meet the bonus, you know, normally. And I don't know what it is for used cars. Was a must. Amen. You had to do it. It was a must or you got laid off. Well, you, yeah, you got. Yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't get nothing, buddy. <laughs> Amen. Oh, you know, again, your faith's got to drive you in those things. But, you know, he only sold three in one month. One month. Uh, when we were there Friday night, he sold three in one day <laughs> or two. I mean, you know, uh, I mean, it's just the way it is. Um, but, you know, uh, uh, he, he, he was just making sure his speaking system was right. But God wasn't limited by the, by the shutdown. God wasn't limited in his life or his family. They bought a, a new Highlander uh, uh, during that time. Uh, they were blessed. God was moving. You know, we saw God move all last year, didn't we, during all this mess? How many of you say yes and amen? Yes. Absolutely. And you know, He's still moving today. Isn't that right? 
And he's going to keep moving all through 2021, but he's going to do abundant overflow in 2021. Amen? Amen. Amen. Best year of your life right now. Doesn't matter what the economy is or, or whatever pandemic might come. Maybe the zombie apocalypse will come next. But it don't matter because I'm a king's kid and I got it made in the shade, baby. Are you listening to me? Amen. Amen. I want to stir you today. God's opening a new door for you and a new door for this church to be blessed and experience increases never before. Amen. You know, David, David wrote about God's faithfulness in Psalm 37, 25. He wrote about his uh, faithfulness. He said these words, and we all know this scripture. We've heard it before. But he says, I was young and now I am old. Some of us can say yes and amen to that line, right? Amen. Amen. I was young and now I am old. Yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. Amen. Do you believe it? I believe it. God's faithful. He's faithful. David is declaring his faithfulness. He said, all my life, I've seen everything. Is what he's saying? Can I paraphrase it? He's just talking, you know. He says, you know, I've been young. I watched God do all sorts of stuff. You know, when the bear would come, the lion, I whooped them. Amen. Power of God, I come out there and just whoop, whoop, bust some head. Took that old Goliath down. I tell you what, bless God. I got the power, baby. I mean, he's fired up. Amen. Why do you think his wife, he dan- his wife thought he danced like a fool, all right, when the, when the ark came through. But you know why? He's happy because he's seen victory after victory. Amen. You listening to me? I was young and now I am old. This is in his latter years. You know, and yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor their children begging for bread. I can confirm this truth, uh, truth in our lives. And I'm telling you what, what God has uh, always done for us. He's always taken care of uh, Melissa and I, even before we were married, he's always took care of me. We've seen him do things for our family and jobs and different things. And God's goodness just flows all the time. For Pastor Matthew, we see that in our family flowing with him, our, our brother David and different ones. I mean, God's just moving in their lives. And we see it happening all the time. Y'all remember my cousin Donna? Uh, you know, the, her, her nose, they, they're doing the surgery. You know, she got carjacked, you know. Uh, uh, when when uh, uh, Cheryl Pruitt, or, uh, Salem prayed for her, I mean, it did something to Donna on the inside. And uh, uh, she just had her, 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 a new surgery on her inner ear uh, this past Thursday. And she gets the packing out later. Uh, it was real deep in there what they had to do. And uh, uh, I believe all of her ringing will cease. Do you believe that with me? Yeah. But I'm telling you what, I know that girl's going to see a, a miracle take place in certain areas. I mean, that bullet missed. I mean, it really, it could have went through her skull, but it did not. Amen. And the doctor has fixed her nose up really good. Uh, after this uh, surgery with the ear, they're going to go back and do surgery on the nose, and she'll look just like she always did in her pictures when it's all said and done. God's good. Amen. What the devil meant for evil, trying to take her out, God's turned it all around on her behalf. Amen. Our God's a what kind of God? Good God. And he does what all the time? Good things. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm just telling you, God's no respecter of person. How he's taking care of all of us, how he's taking care of this church, he'll do the same thing for you. Amen. Can I hear a big amen? amen? He'll do the same thing for you. Amen. Now, now I, I know you already know this, but I just want to remind you this. God can always be depended upon. My God can always be dependent upon. You can depend on him. Are you listening to me? How many of you got friends that show up late all the time? They don't have their proverbial act together at all. They can't even use an alarm clock. Y'all know people like that? People get fired from their jobs for showing up late. Are you listening to me? Amen. You can't do that. You got to be on time. Right? You got to. I mean, Wesley shows up early. I mean, when he's working at one place, he was showing up about, what, six, seven, and uh, working an hour before they opened. And getting overtime before the week was out, before the week was out. You know, God will do things if you just show you put your effort out there in your faith. He'll do major things for you. And I tell you what, there's been a lot of favor in his life because of those things. Every one of our guys, they've had favor like that. Amen. Andrew wasn't even uh, uh, 18 at the time. He's doing management work. They couldn't call him a manager technically, but they gave him the uh, management authority. 
because of, uh, of the character. Amen. You know, good things happen if you focus on the good. Amen. God's no respecter of persons. He can be depended upon. Uh, you know, I never know how exactly God's going to do something, but I know whatever blessing I need, I am confident that He always comes through. How about you? Amen. Amen. I am confident that He always comes through. And I'll tell you this, God has never let us down. Never. He might not have been early, but he never let us down. Amen. You know, sometimes it ain't what you think. Sometimes, that's why you need to chill out and turn off the news and everything else. Focus on the word. Sometimes it's not what you think. It's what he said in his word that counts. And the quicker you get that through your head, you'll live a happier life and not feel like you have to go to drink. When you realize you better be drinking from the well of the Holy Ghost, it'll change your perspective. Amen. I got fire shut up in my bones. Amen. Shake off the heavy bands like that old song says, lift up holy hands. Magnify the king. Amen. Let me go on here. David's uh, uh, sharing another, uh, another place, uh, all these wonderful attributes given by God. Uh, and we read in 1 Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 11, uh, 1 Chronicles 29 and verses 11 through 12. I want you to see this. It's in your handout as well. But yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power and the glory, the victory and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and in earth is what? Yours. Yours is the kingdom. O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. Now catch this last line here. Both riches and honor come from you, and you reign over all. In your hand is power and might. In your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. Now that verse is real powerful. I encourage you to go and read that from different translations this afternoon. Let it be a little devotional before you come to game night. But this entire passage of scripture is awesome. But I want you to focus on the one statement. Both riches and what? Honor. Say it out loud. Both riches and honor. Both riches and honor come from who? Him. From God. Well, you know what that means? That means God is your ultimate source for riches and for honor. You shouldn't take your eyes off of him because he's good and he's good all the time. Amen. God's good. He's your ultimate source of riches and honor. Amen. Never take your eyes off God for not even a moment. Keep, him, keep your eyes focused on him. You've got to refuse to be distracted. Did you know that? You've got to make yourself not be distracted. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Amen. How many of you get and you start trying to read your Bible or read a devotional or something, and your eyes and your mind's everywhere? Really, honestly, I think you ought to pray in the Holy Ghost more, pray in tongues more. Uh, but you have got to focus on the Lord. And it's, you know, it's something you have to determine to do. Amen. You can't get distracted. You can't get discouraged by circumstances around you because God is your source. Say it out loud. Say, God is my source. See, he's your source for riches and honor. He isn't withholding anything from you. In fact, the Bible says in Psalm 35, uh, in verse 27, 35 and verse 27 says, God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his what? Servants. That's uh, not in your handout, so you better write it down. God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Well, if a show of hands this morning, y'all watching at home today, do a show your hand too. Amen. I see you. But how many of you are a servant of God? Amen. That's all of you. Amen. So, God takes pleasure when you are blessed. Isn't that what that says? God takes pleasure in your being blessed. He loves it when you are blessed. Amen. He absolutely loves it when you're blessed because He loves you. What did we read earlier? Our God is good and He does good what? All the time, right? I'm paraphrasing it, I know. But God takes pleasure in the prosperity of you and me. 
You know, Moses led God's people out of captive, captivity, right? And he encouraged them in Deuteronomy 8.18, he encouraged them to remember the Lord their God, for it is He that gives you the power to what? Get wealth. Amen. The Amplified Bible, I believe it is, one translation, I don't quote me on which one it is here, but that God, we need to remember the Lord because He is the one who gives you the power to make or to create wealth. God has gifted you as His servant. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. Every one of your talents are gifted by God. Everything that you touch, everything that you set your hands to is blessed of the Lord. Are you listening to me? Do you believe that today? You need to believe it. Amen. Speak it out of your mouth that way. You know what? God is the one who gave us the power to make or to create wealth. Well, who again, who gives you that ability? God. I ask you, who gave you that ability? God. Amen. See, God, God, it's His part of the covenant uh, and His commitment to His people that you're blessed. He's a good God. He wants you blessed. Amen. Look what Paul said to Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 17. Look at this. Paul read this out to Timothy, wrote it down, sent it to him. The church at Ephesus where Timothy was a young pastor. He said, charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches. But who should they be trusting in? In the living God who giveth us richly what? All things to enjoy. He gives to us richly, say it out loud, what? All things to enjoy. I know some people get all religious and they just... Because <laughs> they've been taught opposite. God wants you blessed because He's a good God. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Acts, book of Acts, what does it say? Jesus went about doing what? Bad things? No, good things. Healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Poverty is an oppression. Lack is an oppression. God wants you blessed. He wants you blessed. I said God wants you blessed. Amen. Amen. He wants you blessed. We, God has given us richly all things to what? Enjoy. You know what that means, folks? The Bible's boldly declaring that God is our ultimate source. Can I hear an Amen. amen. Is He your source today? Amen. Amen. You know, when times when we needed something extra, you know, I read to you about all the different cars. You know, I pulled this paper out and found it when we started this series first of the year. All the different cars. And I remember when I read all this on that one Sunday morning, somebody after church came up and, and gave us car 19. Amen. You know, we're, we're believing God for something to work, something to have happen, and uh, for something for the church and you know what? That came in and the, and the money that was made off, that was the exact thing we needed to do something for the church. Amen. God always takes care of you. He knows what you need. Amen. you got to be honoring Him, though. you got to be honoring Him. you got to remember the Lord your God. Isn't that right? Amen. See, He's your ultimate source. He wants you to be richly blessed with all things. He just asks that you never forget about who it came from. Amen. He, all He asks is that you remember Him. That's it. He asked us in Isaiah 111, what it was, uh, 118, uh, and the Living Bible says, if you will only obey me, it reads in the Living Bible, it says, I'll make you rich. Why does God want His kids blessed? So they can go and be a blessing. Say that with me. Say, my God wants me blessed richly so that I can turn and be a blessing. Why? Because you are God's personal billboard for success. You are God's personal billboard of how good He is. Can I hear an amen? amen. You are God's billboard for His goodness. Remember, you're, I wrote it in the email this week. You are to be His ambassador in this earth, right? Well, ambassadors show forth the goodness of the country they serve and the king that they honor. And that king that we serve and that king that we honor is the Lord Himself. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, that's all right. You know, that's right. God just asked, He wants you richly blessed of all things. Why? So you can never, uh, all He asks is you just don't forget where it came from. Well, as a warning, 
Don't ever put riches and wealth ahead of God, right? Well, Paul gives some godly advice to you here in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 10. Um, there we go. Uh, it says, for the love of what? Money. Love of it, not money. The love of money. Not Money's not evil. I said money's not evil. Money's not evil. Well, I don't hear you. Amen. Is money evil? Yes. I can't hear you. Yes. No. Well, if it's not evil, uh, you know what? Uh, you know, uh, the, the what's evil is when you get all caught up in it. Amen. Amen. What's evil is when you sit back and say, look at what I did. Uh-uh, baby. Look what the Lord has done. Amen. That's why you tithe. That's why you honor Him. Amen. See, God's your ultimate source, but you don't get into the love of money. You never put riches and wealth ahead of God. Never. But Solomon, the wisdom of Solomon says in Proverbs eleven twenty eight. you see underneath that, it says, He that trusts in his riches shall what? Fall. You put all your eggs in the wrong basket, you're going to fall. Amen. You'll mess up. You'll be fessing up. <laughs> Amen. You'll be fessing up. You've got to stay humble, and you've got to let everyone know that if it wasn't for God, who is my source, then I wouldn't have anything. When we look back in our lives, can I just talk about us for a minute? When we look back in our lives, I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt, it is the goodness of God that has brought us to where we are. It is His faithfulness, it is His goodness, uh, and it is all because of honoring Him and keeping His word. If you live that way, God can do the most, <laughs> the absolutely the most amazing things in your life. Out of the blue. Out of the blue. You know, I, I, I won't give all the details to it, but when we ran off to Hawaii, somebody called on the phone and said, Hey, would you like to do my trip? You're just going to have to get your, get your tickets and, or, or, you know, get it, get it booked. And they took care of the tickets and we, uh, we were able to go to Hawaii. God will do absolutely the most amazing things if, if you just honor Him. You know, uh, 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 when we started doing the Rhema District stuff, you know, uh, this year at Christmas, uh, you know, we appreciated the offering that you all did for all of us, Pastor Matthew and our families and Thomas and all of us. Well, I mean, it was awesome. But, you know, my region guys sent us gift cards and uh, all sorts of stuff. And uh, I'm telling you, you know, this thing's unexpected. And it was, we needed it. We needed it. It was some things we wanted to do, and it blessed us. You know, if you just honor God, He takes care of everything. I said, if you just honor God, He takes care of everything. Amen? Amen? you got to honor Him. You know, whatever your need, whatever your need, whatever breakthrough that you are believing for, whatever breakthrough uh, that you are believing for, God is your source, and He is opening new doors, opening new opportunities to bring supernatural increase and abundant overflow to your life. Amen. He is, gonna, he is opening doors, new doors. He is bringing supernatural increase and abundant overflow to your life as never before, as never before if you'll just focus on Him and honor Him. And folks, it's important for you to know that there's more at stake than just meeting your need. Amen. There is way more at stake than just meeting your need. You don't give to get. You give to be a blessing. Motivation's real important to the Lord. Amen. I said motivation's real important to the Lord. See, there's a reason for riches. There is a purpose for prosperity. There is a reason for His abundant overflow. God wants you to be blessed so that through you, He can be a blessing to others. Did you hear me? Amen. God wants you blessed so that you uh, can let Him live through you as you're hearing the voice of the Spirit on the inside, as you're hearing God speak to you. He'll move through you so that you can turn and be a blessing to many. Amen. And do greater things. That's the reason for his overflow. That's the reason for riches. That is the reason, reason for his blessings. 
He'll set you up real good if you just honor Him. I said He'll set you up real good if you just honor Him. Amen. Amen. And you always remember, it's not what I did, it's what He did. Are you listening to me? You need to make sure you keep that written in the tablet of your heart. It is what He did. It is He who I honor. He is the one that I serve. He is the one that I live for. Because of the blood, I'm not who I used to be. Oh, He's the one that brings wealth and riches into these hands, into your hands. Hold your hands up. Say it out loud. Say, these are the hands of a very rich believer. Do you believe that today? Say, these hands are rich. Amen. Everything you touch overflows with blessing. You believe that with me? These are the hands of a very rich man. Amen. Why? Oh, because I honor him. All because I honor him. All because I turn and I'm going to make sure I listen to his voice and his promptings to bless those who are in need. Amen. He's got to know there's a reason for the abundant overflow. It's so that you can be that blessing. See, that's why it's always important that you're mindful to bless others. That's God's promise. You know, he never breaks his, his word. You know, if you practice giving and sowing to other people, God will always see to it that wealth and riches are in your house. Did you know that? In fact, that's what the scripture says. If you'll honor God, put Him first, He'll always see to it that wealth and riches will be in your house. 112 Psalm, verse 3. Wealth and riches will always be in your house if you'll honor Him. you got to honor Him. Amen. Amen. He always heard, you know, people pray headache prayers. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, thank you, Jesus, for this food. God bless my food. Glory to God. Thank you so much, Jesus. A lot of people give headache giving. It's all I can do to put that dollar in. It's all I can do to put that quarter in, let alone a dollar. Be it unto you as you have believed. <coughs> if, you're so, if you're claiming to be led by the Spirit, really ask God to speak to you. He will. But will you obey Him? Amen. Amen. You have to obey him. That's what he said in Isaiah. If you'll only obey me, says the Lord, I'll make you rich. He's not just talking about money and, and wealth. He's talking about rich in every area of your life. Amen. But he's asking and calling on the church, the body of Christ, to be mindful. Mindful of him and what it's all about. God's, God's promises, He never breaks them. And if you will practice giving, if you will get into a practice, into sowing into others' lives, pra, uh, into the practice of tithing and giving above that tithe, I promise you, God will support your habit. Amen? You know, somebody gets caught up in drugs and stuff, they get to where they're broke and they have nothing. But if you get into the... <laughs> If you get into the habit of honoring God, He will support your habit. Woo, he'll, he'll fix it so that you have a fix all the time. Amen. He'll fix it so you'll be fixed in your wallet all the time. Because you give this to Him first. He will always fix it so that you're blessed and you have money that just flows from your life. Can I hear a big amen? amen. Do you believe it? Why? Because our God's good. Say, my God's good. My God's amen. Good. Wealth and riches will be in your house. You know, your faithful generosity to the Lord qualifies you to believe uh, for Him uh, to bless and prosper you and abound more through you than ever before, that abundant overflow. In fact, when you give to bless others, you break the love of money off of your life. Amen. You hear me? When you give to bless others, when you get above that tithe and, and as far as you're giving towards church and stuff, it opens doors up for things to happen for you. Amen. For things to abound. Things to uh, overflow in your life. But see, when you do those things, when you give to be a blessing, you break that love of money off of your life. And you keep your focus on who is your source. And that is our God, our Father. Amen. 
You know, the idea of blessing you with riches and prosperity can shock sometimes or, or seem greedy to other people. But that's why it's so important to understand the purpose of prosperity. It's not, it's not so that you look real good. It's not so that you always, you know, do the, drive the best, live in the best and all that. God wants you to be blessed, but you're not supposed to let those things have your heart. Amen. He'll give you the best, but he'll give it to you if you honor him. See, that's the secret to success. I said that's the secret to success. That's why you, this year we need to work our way out of debt. Because God wants to use you and use this church to do more. You need to get out of debt so you can give more. I said you need to get out of debt so you can give more. God wants to do great things in your life. Amen. Don't allow religious thinking to rob you of, a, of this wonderful truth I'm telling you. Wealth is not sinful. Wealth is not wicked. Wealth is good. Somebody say amen about that. Amen. How many of you like it when you got what you need? Amen. Right? You like going to your favorite restaurant, don't you? Amen. I mean, it tastes good. I like that kind of food, right? Wealth's not bad. It's not wicked. Wealth is good. Having abundance is not bad. It's good. It's wonderful. Why? Because our God's good. God is not the source of bad. He's the source of all things that are what? Good. I said God is not the source for bad. He's the source for all things that are what? Good. Amen. Why? Our God's a good God. Again, what did David say in the psalm? He said, you are, whoops, you are good. There we go. You are good and you do only good. Amen. Our God's good and he only does good. Amen. Refuse, church, to settle for anything less than the good life that God desires for you. Keep your faith strong. Keep those two systems working right. I'll give you a third system now. You ready? First one was the believing system. Second one was the speaking system. You've got a sound system that's under your nose. It's called your mouth. The third one, always let it be known that God's goodness is why you are where you are. If it had not been for him, where would I be? Like the song says, I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. If you'll operate that way, cut off the, the gloom, the doom, and the depression TV, and focus on his word, focus on honoring him, I'll tell you what, you'll declare like David, Woo! Jesus, you are good, and you do only good in my life. Can I hear a big amen? Amen. Amen. All right. If you're at home, I know some of you have been watching from home. You've already jumped on some of this. Uh, but today, before we go, this is the year of abundant overflow, right? Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, we want to receive a seed offering today. We've been doing this last couple of years, the last Sunday of the month when we do our fast. And we're going to do a seed offering. And uh, we got some things that we're going to be doing uh, and giving out some, doing some outreach things in February. We'll tell you about that next month. And uh, we're, we're going to put this towards some of that and towards some other things that we're going to do. But I'm asking everybody to take an offering envelope. And uh, remember, we talked about setting financial goals uh, at the first of the year uh, in, in your setting of your goals. The papers are back there if you haven't uh, picked one up. You ought to be setting goals, short term, long term so forth, as we share every year. But I want you to get this, how you start will be how you will end. And if you will make a decision, you know, uh, do a special tithe. I, this is what I like to do. I do a special tithe uh, towards how I want to see this year wind up being closed. Amen. How I start will be how I end. So that's why we call it a seed offering. We're asking you to sow towards uh, the, what the theme is this year, abundant overflow. Amen. Maybe you have a number that you want to do, and that's fine. I'm asking you to bow your heads with me here right now and pray. Ask the Lord, Lord, Lord what would you have me do? Amen. I got, we got some things coming up with the building. We got some things that are coming up with some things we're going to be doing as a church. But, you know, I, I, those needs are real. But this is for you. This offering's for you. It's not for the church per se, but it's for you. It's for you to honor God with uh, 
uh, an extra generosity, with, uh, with that extra that's above your tithe, with that extra that you're setting a goal for that you want to see take place in your life this year. So I believe God is opening a new door of supernatural increase for you. And as you pray about it there, ask the Lord what he would have you do. And I challenge you, take a step of faith. Take a step of faith. Don't, look, don't ever stop looking to God as your source, but take a step of faith. Keep on praising Him and thank Him that He's your provider. But where do you want this year, 2021, to end up come December 31st? Let's plant a seed towards that. All right? Any amount, doesn't matter what it is, we're going to pray over your offering today. Amen. We're going to pray over it together because our God's a good God and He does what? Only good. Hallelujah. As you pray there, uh, again, if you need an offering envelope, hold your hand up. They'll make sure you get one if you haven't gotten one yet. But let's believe God for increase for you. I believe this year is going to be the best year of your life. Do you believe that? Yes. Amen. Amen. Best year of your life. Best year for your family. Best year for your business, your jobs. Best year ever. Amen. So let's pray over it. Father God, right now in Jesus' name, we thank you. We thank you for this opportunity to honor you. And Lord, we plant this special seed Right now, we're sowing into our abundant overflow for 2021. We thank you, Lord, that as we sow this special seed offering, we thank you, Lord, that you are opening up new doors of favor and riches and wealth and supernatural increase for our lives. Amen. Sherry, for your books, for your book writing. Amen. Uh, those of you with your businesses, supernatural increase in your businesses, at your jobs, bonuses, raises, and promotions in Jesus' name. Favor, unprecedented favor. Amen. Lord, we just thank you that as we take this step of faith, we never stop looking, looking at you, Lord, as our ultimate source, and we will never stop praising you for being such a wonderful provider because that's who you are. Our God is good, and you are good all the time. And Lord, we just bless this special offering right now. We thank you, Lord, for the return. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're going to be doing all this year. And this year, we're going to hear testimony after testimony of the goodness of the mighty hand of God for each one of our, our church members and those who fellowship here. In Jesus' name right now. And everybody that agrees with that shouted, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. While they pass the buckets, say it out loud. Say, this is my year of abundant overflow amen did you learn something today amen if you don't know the lord it's real easy to ask jesus into your heart if you're watching from home god wants to do good things in your life he wants to, you know he's got his will is that you are blessed and if you've never asked jesus into your heart it's real easy to do all you have to say is just pray this simple prayer lord jesus come into my life i believe you died for me i believe you were raised from the dead i believe your blood was shed so that i could be cleansed from all unrighteousness Jesus, come into my life. From this moment forward, I, I, I am and will be born again. And I thank you for saving me. That's it. That's how easy it is. You know, with that simple prayer, you, you, you just, you just uh, uh, wrote your ticket to heaven. Amen. Amen. You're part of the family. And I just believe God's doing good things in your life from this day forward. Amen. If you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, as we close today, if you would like to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, come up here. We'll be glad to pray for you. Amen. I've never seen anybody who came up sincerely wanting the baptism not get it every time. Amen. It's going to be, I tell you, and it's, it's, how many of you know it's good to pray in the Holy Ghost? Amen. Amen. How many of y'all do it all the time? Hey, I, I, I'm turning the TV off, walking around the house late at night. Praying in tongues has just really helped me more than anything especially these last few months. What a blessing. Amen. I'd rather be skunk drunk on the Holy Ghost than to be lost. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, stand up on your feet. Thank you for your patience this morning and going a little bit long with communion and all the things. Say it out loud. Say, my God, my God is, a is a good God. Shout this out loud this morning. I'm going to go ahead and do it, Pastor Matthew. Uh, say it out loud. Say, I am created, I am created to reign in life. I am breaking free from normal and stepping into an extraordinary life. My 2021 is filled with abundant overflow. The kind of overflow that God designed me to live in. 
2021 is my year of abundant overflow. Amen and amen. Hey, if we, if we can pray for you for anything, uh, you need to put hands laid on you for healing or anything, come up. We'll be glad to pray with you. We love you. Uh, we'll see you, ladies, at the Bible study. Game night tonight or this Wednesday. What else? Uh, Friday night, Friday night uh, the Bible study, too, for, the, for college age folks. And anybody else wants to come, you're welcome to. But we love you. We'll see you. Thanks for watching from home. We'll see you all later, too. God bless you. You're just